Hey, John here from John's Do It Yourself. I got tired of replacing the frames around my back porch doors because the rain would rot the wood and then the sun would beat and fade the paint. So what I did is I went to the store and bought some of this composite material. This stuff is great. It's easy to cut and you can make it into any shape you want. So it just so happened that I had a weekend angler come to me and said, hey John, do you think you could replace the center console in my boat? It needs to be strong enough to stand on and I also want you to modify it and put a USB port in it. So when I thought about that, I said, I got just the stuff that's perfect for your boat. So let's go ahead and start cutting this stuff and I'm gonna show you how easy this stuff is to work with and maybe you have a project that you might wanna use it for. So let's get cutting. Just so I don't get any rocks thrown at me for calling this composite board, it's actually labeled as PVC board. The piece I got to complete this project was one inch by eight inches and eight feet long. So the measurements for this center console are going to be 16 and a half inches by 15 and three quarters. I am also going to add a cut, I mean a beer holder. My first cut will be the 16 and a half one. I will make the mark and then draw my line with a speed square. As with all my miter cuts, use the square to align your blade. Do not ever trust the measurements on the guide. This stuff cuts like butter, so take your time and be slow. I forgot to add the height of the box. He wanted the new one to be a little bit higher than the old one, so cutting the board perfectly in half will give me four inches. With the added top and bottom of the box, we will be just a little over five inches. This would allow me to cut the piece perfectly in half. Remember this piece was eight inches. And also remember to run both sides back through to ensure they are identical. Now we have our front and our back pieces. Now to cut the sides. Just like before, we are going to make our marks, but this time at 15 and 3 quarters of an inch. Use our speed square to align it and then cut our board. We can walk it over to the table saw and it should still be set from the first cut. Just quickly run it through and we have our sides. Okay, I know you guys love it when I make mistakes. Yeah, I'm still an amateur. Well, the original box had a slight outward bevel to it, so I wanted to replicate that. I'm not sure it really serves a purpose other than for looks, but I pulled out my protractor and replicated a perfect angle on the end of the side boards. This worked perfect in my head, but after I made the cut, I realized why this would not work. When I took the ends back to align them, I saw my error. The end piece would need an angle cut so it would be flat on the bottom piece. This angle would actually cause the board to be shorter than the end pieces. So to save this piece, I will use it as the cross support piece that will reinforce this box when it's used as a step. I will simply recut the end piece from a new piece of the PVC. Since I randomly made an angle for the end, it would be quicker to align the blade with the already cut ends, instead of using a protractor to align the blade for that angle. Once set, I cut the bottom of the piece, which will allow it to sit flush on the base once we cut that piece. To keep me from screwing this up again, I went back to the box and held my piece in position. Then I made my new cut marks. This would ensure my piece was the perfect height and it would keep me from making any more stupid mistakes and wasting wood. If you noticed, when I made my marks, the top mark was to ensure I was perfectly aligned with the saw blade. The second mark was just a quick reference to ensure I was cutting the angle in the right direction. Yes, I have been known to cut angles in the wrong direction, and that is frustrating, and this keeps me from continuously calling myself a knucklehead, so this time it worked. Now that the end looks good, we can take the piece I screwed up earlier on and make it as the support bar to give aid in giving more support when the box is used as a step. I move to the workbench to ensure my box is perfectly flat when I get this measurement. I want this piece to be tight with no play, but if you do cut this a fraction too short, don't sweat it because this PVC stuff bends well, and when you screw the pieces together, it will draw tight and overcome this. Once the piece is cut, I consider a few things here for its placement. First, I don't want the piece exactly in the center. I need it a little bit back because the purpose of the USB port that I'm adding is to allow an iPad and iPhone to charge. So I want to make sure the forward part of the box has enough room for an iPad. But I also want to consider the back space has enough to allow the beer holder to sit deep without obstruction. 
The next step is to create the base. I need to take a measurement from the outside edges, but nothing should have changed from your original measurements of 16 and a half inches, but just to make sure I measure it again. The key to this piece will be starting the angle of the box upward. I don't want it to be flat on the front. I want the beveled edge to continue up to the very top. And at this point, the angle on the table saw should not have been changed as this was your last cut. So just run it through. I go back and check my angle. This is what I meant with the angle starting at the bottom and continuing all the way to the top. With that piece in place, I can take my measurement from the end to the piece I just cut for my next rip. Take another piece and place your box back together. I'm going to cut the lid now, but I want to make sure it goes all the way across to sit halfway on the cr cross support. So with the box upside down, I make a mark on both sides of the cross support to ensure when I cut the piece, I am cutting it in the dead middle. This piece was actually a scrap piece and was 12 inches wide. So keep that in mind when getting your material for this project. With the base cut to size, you can screw it together. Now you probably don't really need pilot holes, but I drilled them anyway. Then I caulked and screwed the base of the box together to ensure it would be watertight. Now I know you guys love it when I make mistakes, so after doing this, I just realized that I had not installed the USB port yet. So I had to go back and unscrew the support crossbar and uh, take it out before the caulk set. Installation of the USB port was super easy. I simply drilled a hole through the center of the board, fed my wires through, snapped off the faceplate, screwed the base into position and then snapped the faceplate back on and screwed the cross support back into place. I needed to extend the wire on the back of the USB port to ensure they traveled all the way outside the box. So I joined the back with some extra wire and while I was at it, I added connectors to make the job of installing the box a lot easier. Sometimes you got to be able to laugh at yourself, but here I use the marks from the centering cut to put my feed hole perfectly in the corner. But when I flipped the box over, I just realized I put the hole on the wrong side of the cross support. What an amateur. So I will drill out the correct side and fill the other with caulk. I will place some duct tape over the wires after I feed them through the hole just to keep them out of the way when I push the cup holder through. I place connectors on the end so all the owner will have to do is feed the wire into the connector and crimp it down and he'll be connected. The piece that I am installing now is just a lip that houses the hinges and keeps the hinges from undue stress when it's stepped upon. It actually locks the box in place. We are going to repeat the steps to make the top of the box. So let's just skip that. The next step is to take your beer holder and trace out the perimeter with a pencil. I got this cup holder at the Rugged store online. I just want to give them a shout out because they are an American based company and have great customer service and quality products. So give them a look. With a plunge router, I simply cut out my stenciled lines. Did I tell you this stuff cuts like butter? It's pretty easy to push through. So make sure you take your time and don't get ahead of yourself. Now check your fit. It's okay if it's a little loose because you can cut the carpet to extend through the hole to keep it snug and tight when we're carpeting the box. Continue caulking and screwing your box together. For the lid, we are going to use flex tape as a hinge. This stuff is waterproof, just like you see in the commercials. So not having a metal hinge on the lid, we don't have to worry about a bulge under the carpet where you step, nor do we have to worry about anything rusting. I place some staples close to the joint to give it extra support so the tape does not pull up after lifting the lid up and down multiple times. I then add a little bit more overlapping in the opposite direction. Just for more support, I want to make sure this stuff lasts. 
The next step is to carpet the box. I purchased some outdoor carpet that will be able to handle the water and the abuse from being stepped on. So starting at the bottom, I will cut this to fit. I will use both 3M adhesive and staples to hold the carpet in position. Before moving on, cut a line for your cup holder and push it in. Make some relief cuts around the edge and then you can move on. Having your cup holder in will help you hold the carpet in place as you move on to finish the rest of the box. Just keep working the carpet around the box, spraying your 3M, cutting where you have too much overlap, and then stapling the carpet in place. What I found worked best was just a one inch overlap on each edge. This way you had two pieces of carpet to staple into, and then you didn't have a lot of bulk left over. One of the best parts about working with this color of outdoor carpet is how well it hides the staples. Flip the box over and add the hinges to the bottom of the box. These are actually the hinges from the original box. I did this just to ensure everything fits like the original box did in the boat. Your very last step is to add the fastener. I used the original as well here. Simply hold down the lid tight for a good seal and screw in the button. And that's it. This box is not just waterproof, it's water resistant. It can safely hold your iPhone, your wallet, your iPad, even in the rain, all while charging. So if you like this build, hit the thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.